All right. Sorry for uh, making you wait this long, but a, a, a five minute interview with you, I don't think would have give, given the listeners and the people at home what they really want. So uh, it glad probably, that you, honestly, it probably is. Yeah, it's true. Maybe people start. Uh, le- I thought no one really cared uh, when we had AB on because I guess YouTube was going through something weird and we had like a thousand mm. people and it went down to 17. And I was like, oh, I guess people don't really mm. want to. He's been on here way too much. So uh, yeah, whatever. But. Uh, I think that was just some sort of YouTube glitch, but we are back now. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was going to be it, Ezra. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I know. I, I know. Thought, we texted you before, team. You said, go get one. And I was like, heck yeah. And I, yeah, I awesome. thought this was it. Um, yep. I, I guess, I guess the first question is, before we dive into and you know nitpick because that's what we like to do here, right? We like to nitpick everyone. Oh, yeah. What what do you think it is now? You know, back to back tournaments being right there at the end. What what do you think it is that is that hurdle that you have to make it over to actually finally be standing in the winner's circle? Yeah, um, well, I think it's Texas State. I just went against like two of the best tournament plays, like two guys that play like the best tournament, like ever, I guess. So like, I don't know. I feel like Dan and, and Anthony just shot crazy rounds at that event. So I feel like I played good enough at that tournament to win almost any other event. If those two guys hadn't obviously popped off. Like, I feel like if I played the way I played Texas States, I think I would have actually won this event. Um, and then this, for this event, you know, honestly, I made some, I made some questionable decisions in the fourth round and my execution wasn't that great in the fourth round of this event. And then other than that, like the second round and the third round, I felt like we're pretty solid. I was aggressive when I felt like I needed to be. Um, so I think I'm, I think I'm in the right direction. I'm on pace. Um, it just hasn't happened yet. Some people are saying Judah might be the missing piece. She's Is that rich. he's. He's about, I think he's maybe an hour away right now. He's on his way oh, to, boy. to come to Nashville. So, yeah. So, you might, you might be able to help out a little bit. Uh, we can't gamble in uh, disc golf just yet, soon. Uh, but if we yep. could, I would be throwing all my chips in on Ezra this week with Judah on the bag. Um, Heck yeah. Uh, what, are, what are some things that, have, that you've been working on to, like, complete your game out? Like to, to make you more of a complete game, uh, complete, complete player. Cause watching your game this year, it seems like you have all the shots. So like, what were things that you were working on this off season to get you to where you are now? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of always working on kind of most everything. And then I kind of just shift the focus a little bit. This off season, I, I focused a lot more on the circle two putting than I did last season. Um, my circle one putting was fantastic last year, but my circle two putting lacked a little bit where the year prior, it was actually really good. So I've been putting more time into the circle two putting and that's helped a lot for this season. And then also just hitting different angles. Um, I've kind of been known as just a a hyzer guy, just kind of a one angle hyzer flip shots, power hyzer shots. And I've been throwing a lot more oval stable stuff, either flat or even on Annie. And so I'm not really, I'm not as, as skilled to throw anhyzer shots. I feel like that's helped a lot, especially when it gets windy out. It's so beneficial to be able to rip something super oval stable on Annie and know that it's just going to find the way it kind of always does. Um, so that kind of dependability has been a huge help for my game, especially in the last couple of events while it's been so windy. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough. I would say because me and Kelsey were watching the masters, the master masters ends lead card is like on hole 15 or so. So me and her are both watching like the end stretch and you get to 18 and I'm like, watch this. His circle two putts fire. He's going to make this. And then it's like, no, yeah. why did that just come yeah, out of your hands? Like a little that. weird. It, it just, yeah, it just came out soft, man. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't quite get the pump on that putt that I'm looking for. Um, I don't know. My circle putt, my circle two putt wasn't really that great that day at all. I had quite a few looks. I think I was, maybe like two for nine. I had a really nice putt on hole one, but then all of them that, my circle two putt was not landing. And it was, I mean, obviously it was super windy. So it made the, the circle two putt difficult. And I was pretty much running everything I had a chance at. Cause I felt like I had to be very aggressive. Um, so I, I ran almost every, I think I ran every circle two putt that I had. Um, and it just, they just were not falling. And then, you know, the one on 18 obviously didn't fall as well, which that would have been nice. Did you, did you know that you were five under through six with that putt on hole seven there? Um, what, what are you yeah, doing there, yeah. Ezra? What are you doing? 
I'm learning that part, bro. I'm 100% learning that part. I can't, okay, here's the thing. I'm glad, I'm, I'm, thanks for having me on the podcast. Because I've gotten a lot of comments about people saying, like, you oh, no. Says, you're, you're not you're, you're that part. <laughs> you <laughs> say, do not run that <laughs> Bro, bro, bro. Under two sticks. Five under two <laughs> sticks. Yeah. Amazing pace compared to the field. So many holes left. Right. Little soft, little layup. Tap it in. <laughs> You're still so far ahead. No, uh, here's the thing. First of all, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't. I wasn't taking school, so I had no idea that people were having slow rounds. Except for, I guess, I was somewhat aware of the people on my card on, on how they were shooting, but not. I would have guessed that they, they were maybe a couple on those. So I, I, I guess I, I thought I gained some strokes on them, uh, but I had no idea about lead card, and I feel like I can't bank on. The competition playing so slow, such slow rounds, you know, like I, I think in my position, I can't bank on Anthony and Calvin shooting like six down and Isaac shooting e like even or whatever he shot. So I feel like I'd, I'd rather lose the tournament the way I lost it than lose it because I, I don't play aggressive when I have the opportunities and go back and like, oh man, if only I ran that putt and made it, then I would have had a chance. So I, I stick by that decision and then, you know, there was the. We'll, the, get, to the that. we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to yeah, that. So, we'll get to yeah. that. We'll get to that. I just. And I felt like I had to run that putt. It was only, you know, it was just outside the circle. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my putt right now. Obviously, the wind made that putt almost impossible, probably. Um, Ron Jones you know, says the wind. I stand by the decision, just not the execution. Ron Jones just said the wind kept telling you to lay up, too. Listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, did, yeah, a scuba, I, I just... did a scuba ever cross your mind? <laughs> nope. Not with the putt. That's yeah, that's you throw the skewer. Yeah, but, uh, but I'll throw for too much, man. I, I, I'm in three weeks. I forget about the skewer. I I do have a question about that putt. That would have been electric if you would have busted out the skewer. <laughs> made it. I would have freaked. I would have freaked out. Oh my gosh. So so going back to that putt, I do have a question about it because it the wind swirling. It's a tough one, obviously. Did the wind die down because it looked like you were like thinking and taking your time and then all of a sudden you just like stepped up and just you know what happened happened was there a oh. lull in the wind and you were like oh it's time or were you just like no i'm that guy bam or what take me um, to the thought process on it there might have been a slight lull. i mean the part like i stood over that part for way longer than uh and then i probably should have i mean i, I definitely went over 30 seconds which i don't know if that's even a rule anymore come on um, man I was, I was to, come on man was, you're was, part was, of the problem you're part of the problem <laughs> man no, no no i was i was willing to accept a warning if, if somebody wanted to call me on it and give me a warning i was i was fine with that um i was hoping the wind was going to die down more it never did so i i at some point you have to just you have to just pot when it's windy and uh yeah, maybe I should have waited two more minutes and then it went down for me. But it maybe went down a little bit, but I had to just give it, I had to go at some point. If you would have had flags on the basket, that would have helped too, maybe. Uh, see, exactly. Yep. Yes, flags on the basket. Um, Especially that basket. You can't even see the basket from the, from the approach shot. <laughs> All right. You know, like, uh, that's the one where they need to have like, they need to have like the 10 foot flag on that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, all right. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Do you have that Go shot? Ahead. Do you have that shot? I don't know what you're talking about, Brody. I have no idea what you're talking about. Is that like that's not a like when I think of like when I think of like okay, Ezra's top ten shots. I don't think I don't think a straddle standstill forehand from a hit through over water. Right. 20 mile, right. five mile per hour wins. I, I don't yeah, think feeling, yeah. that I don't feel that is in their top 10, but maybe I'm wrong. You haven't seen, um, any, you haven't seen any practice that shot. <laughs> um, so again, was that one of those things of where at that point in time, had you looked at scores to see where you were? Ooh, um, I don't think I looked at scores until after that hole, actually. Oh man, maybe I did. Maybe I did. I, maybe I looked after like hole 10 or 11. And I, I remember looking at the scores at some point and seeing that Anthony was having a, a pretty bad round. And he was like, you know, a few spots behind me even. So I, I had to check before that. I don't know. I think I, I, after my bow got hole 10, um, and then I pulled hole 11, got hole 12. And then after that, I was thinking, if I have the same finish that I had on Saturday, which I went, oh, 
I looks like everyone's frozen. Oh. No, you no, we're we're listening oh. intently. Yeah, no, we're listening to what you're gonna say. Well, okay. well, why the heck did you do a try to go 350 foot stand still straddle pile all the way across water? Okay, I'm speaking to the best Okay, uh, so I thought if I I went seven down to the last six holes on Saturday, and so I was thinking if I have that if I have that finishing stretch again, I probably have a chance of winning this tournament still, even though I thought yeah, by like out of it. three. Yeah, I. I well, I also can't know that everyone's going to, you know, not play that great. So I, I thought like I had to be aggressive. So then I, then I missed, uh, I missed whole, I missed whole 14. And then, uh, yeah, on 14, I was just like, I can't, I'm, I'm going to lay this up. And then hopefully, you know, hopefully I shoot the next shot and get a body. Or am I going to go for this and try to give myself an ego opportunity and uh, play aggressive and make sure I can just distance myself? Because I, Again, I, I felt like I felt like I had to play aggressive. I, I felt like I couldn't bank on anyone else messing up, and you know I can't back it. Bank on Ben, you know, missing the the 15 footer on, on the next hole. I can't sure. bank on him sliding OB on 17 and then going OB on 18. Like I can't, I can't think that these people are going to make these mistakes. And so I felt like I had to have the, the pedal on the floor. And uh, unfortunately, that shot was just like a fair local center shot. If I was like four feet last of where my my tee shot was, it would have been a way easier shot because oh, I could have actually had like a normal stance. Um, and I actually shot a little bit too well. Honestly, I think, see, I think if I would have thrown that shot a little bit higher, it would have skipped like middle of the lake instead of right at the beginning of the lake, and then maybe would have had a chance. But maybe oh, it no. just came out low, and then yeah, the wind it wasn't, it was not good. What? Uh, gone too. I, I like that. I like that. Oh chance. yeah, that this was yeah, that this was in the middle. Uh, what, what did Jude have to say after that? I'm sure, I'm sure he had some sort of words for you, or no, he hasn't said anything. No, we talked on the phone a little bit. He. uh he he thinks I need to be aggressive. I mean, maybe when he when he walks in the door, he'll he'll just be like, "What were you thinking on that shot?" And he's like, "If I was on the bag, you know, we would have won the talk." You know, who knows what he'll actually say in Boston? But on the phone, I feel like he agreed that I had that. You know, I needed to be aggressive. It's just like the competition level this season is so insane. It's always getting better, and people are playing so well. And especially like with what I saw in, in Texas State, it's like you just you really can't you can't afford to just play slow. You can't afford to make mistakes, obviously, but you really can't afford to just. You can't you can't afford to just not not body every single hole. It seems like sometimes. Well, what about now that you see like in those conditions? Let's say you lay up right. the putt. Let's say you lay that one up, and then all of a sudden the outcome could be completely different. Does that change your mindset moving forward? Or are you like this is just a one off? Like nobody's ever going to play this bad again. <laughs> And, or is there like yeah. something to learn from it to be like, Hey, I need to have a more of a golfer's mentality maybe and, and pick my spots a little more and believe that, you know, if I do that and execute those things that I, ha I have a better chance, or is it just, yeah. we, we got to birdie every hole. Cause I, I agree with you. Like I, I was is. talking about Ben, Ben laying up his putt and I'm like, you can't do that yeah. in that situation. In my opinion. Right. Yeah. I don't see that working with the people that are behind Ben. Um, but Yuli, we're not talking yeah, well, about a 45-foot putt here. We're talking about a straddle forehand across the water. No, I'm talking about the other putt that he ran. Like, do, you, you know what I mean? Oh. He lays that putt up because he ends up three-putting. Was your putt and feeling then he good lit. at that point, S? It had to have been, right? Like it, my, my putt's been pretty good for a while. Yeah, my putt's been, yeah, my putt's been yeah. good. I mean, I, let's see. I, I pulled the one hole, but that wasn't because I missed a putt. Okay. Um, I guess technically it was kind of a putt, but it was like 60 feet obstructed, so it wasn't really. Yeah, so you know, you're, doing you're just feeling you're yeah. feeling yourself on that one, then I guess. Um, but yeah, no, it's hard. Like, I just felt like it was a situation I had to make. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's 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 a lot easier, obviously, to be in me and Yuli's spot, right, and be like the armchair quarterback, being like, "Oh, you should have done this. You should have done this." Yeah. Because one thing that doesn't get talked about that much is like when you do throw a crazy aggressive shot, and it results in the birdie. Right. Like no one right. ever says like, holy cow, like that was so risky. Um, and we right. see that, we see that often from a lot of people, right. Of where it does right. work out. Unfortunately, this one, it didn't for you, but, uh, how, how do you feel? Sorry, Yuli, did you have a question in there? I'm sorry if I yeah cut you off. I asked it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went on a tangent. Um, sorry. Yeah. First of all, it's, it's, it's just, it, I think it's too easy to look back. Um, with the hindsight being 2020 thing and, and knowing how everyone shoot, if I knew that that that, that, that feature call was gonna shoot six under as our best round, then I think that obviously changes my game plan a little bit. Um, as far as your question, Yuli, as far as like you know playing golf, I feel like that's actually one of my biggest strengths. 
is is managing shot selection and, and knowing when to be aggressive and knowing when to lay up and all that stuff. I really don't have a problem laying putts up typically. Now that's <laughs> that's 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 when that's you know the full two rounds kind of thing. That's the full three rounds of a four round tournament. That's yeah, when I yeah. don't know what the what the outcome is. When I get to that final round and it's like I'm I'm starting out the round three behind the lead the lead called the lead LCR. Um my my game set my game plan has to change a little bit. I think that's that's part of playing golf too and part of strategy is being able to adjust where your players are depending on the situation and that mostly comes in the final, you know, the final round and the final moments. So I don't think I don't think my mentality on that's gonna change a whole lot. Since I think it's always I think I think the mentality I want to have is just taking the right shot for the situation, and it's kind of always different. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Jacob, one of our Tour Life members here, says Ezra will go down as a great. And that leads me to my next point. You are probably now, you are probably have now put yourself in the conversation as one of the best players on tour that hasn't won yet. How does that feel? Yeah. Um, yeah, is that I mean, like, does that I feel, feel good? Like I feel like I've, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't really care, I guess. I, I kind of thought of myself that way anyway. Um, I, I kind of thought of myself in that spot for the last few years anyway. Joe actually asked me um, after after um, Anthony won Waco in Chess.com, um, Big Joe asked me who I thought was like the next person, you know, who, who, who has the one that's like the best player. Um, we were at Waco when he asked that. And I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe Aaron, um, or I was like, I think myself too. And then he was like, yeah, and then he, he, he said Nicholas, which, you know, obviously makes sense as well. Um, but I, I, I put myself in that position as well. And I think, I don't know, I, I feel like I, I feel like I deserve to be thought of that way. So it's not, it's not yeah. a surprise to me, I guess. Yeah, no, I think you're in there. And uh, our Edwin stats actually said that uh, you led Jonesboro in strokes gain putting at 8.02 almost six strokes better than a B you also mm. have the 10th most you have the 10th most elite slash majors Ezra has the 10th most elite majors since 2019 without a win at 69 10th most. Okay. So you're in the top 10. Okay. Yeah. There you have it. Yeah. So are you, uh, you playing, you're playing this week with Jude on the bag. Yeah. If he wants to, yeah, we'll see. Okay, um, but hopefully oh. he does. I, I could, I, I could also see him not wanting to like change any, mess anything up. But I, I don't know. I think he'd be more beneficial than any negative thing. So I'd, I'd love that one. Y- Yuli, ask Ezra that question that we were talking about. I'm curious to, to see what his thoughts are on it. The uh, injuries. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so I was Go thinking about this today. Go to <laughs> I was thinking about this today. Uh, kind of reflect well, what brought it up is we we saw the post from chris dickerson and having um it was a pretty brutal brutal uh instagram post i don't know if you saw that mm-hmm. but uh basically he has like a bad hip and it's gonna need to be replaced eventually type thing oh, no. um and he had an mri and you go look at it and then send him a nice message yeah. afterwards because I, I feel like he needs it right now but uh He's playing, but anyway, that's beside the point. I, what jogged my, what jogged this topic was, I was playing today, and and I felt like the course was very sidearm heavy, um, into a lot mm-hmm. of the greens, like big big time, and and power sidearms. And I can't help but notice, you know, the injuries that are happening on the tour right now with with Calvin and Eagle and even Macbeth and Drew Gibson. Um, I see the course is changing and it becoming more power oriented. And when I think about like early on in my career, when there, there wasn't as many players, obviously probably touring full time, but I don't remember like a lot of injuries ever happening. Like I never remember it being like, Oh, yep. I'm done for the season. I popped my elbow or I popped my shoulder and I'm sure they happen, but not at the pace that it's kind of happening right now. And I'm wondering is, is there something that needs to be done with like, there's got to be an answer. The pro tour has to protect their assets in some way or another. And, and whether it's like uh, with course design or, or maybe, or maybe it falls on the player for, for having to have better um, rehab after their round or warm up routines and, and goes th- through those things. But I think about like pitching, I think about football after these pro athletes are done or even on their break, cause they're getting iced up, they're getting shoulder work. You know, that's a really tough 
that's really tough on your body. Is there something that the pro tour should do or is it on the player and are the courses really the main problem as far as these injuries or is it just, no, these athletes are not taking good care of themselves. Oh, wow. Um, I, I don't think we can blame the courses because I think as far as the sport goes, we want the courses to, to play the best for the spectators and for the competition and for everything in that kind of aspect. So I think we have to, push the, the courses. Um, I don't think the pro tour should really force us to do anything as far as um, like body maintenance. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's their job. And I think if someone does get injured, like, you know, as bad as it is to say, like everyone's kind of replaceable, we can all be replaced. So, you know, if Eagle's injured um, and Calvin is maybe injured and not playing as well, people like Anthony are going to step up and, and kind of fill that space. And there's always going to be a top player. Um, I think I think it comes on the players individually to to take care of our, to take care of ourselves. You know, we're we pro athletes. This is our job. I feel like we should take it seriously and uh, do what is necessary to not get injured. And maybe that even means not necessarily throwing a forehand on every single hole where it requires a forehand. You know, if if, if you are someone who is injury prone, maybe throwing the backhand shot a little bit more than you'd like to, just to make sure you don't have injuries. I think I talked to Connor um, O'Reilly in the past. And I think he's kind of shifted his game that way to to kind of hopefully. Um, improve his longevity to kind of try to be more of a backhand dominant player. He used to be a forehand dominant. That idea. Um, and then also, I don't know, man, like in baseball, those guys rip uh, pitches all, like all day long or whatever. And, and they'll, you know, they're putting a lot more power into that baseball than we put into a disc. And um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like they're still doing it. So I, 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 yeah, I look think, at Jake Wall. I, like I mean, Jeffy. you're 100. I like I like the point right. of you saying that we're all replaceable to a point. Yeah. Listen, right. we don't need Paul McBeth going down. We don't need Calvin going down because those guys are not replaceable. You know what I mean? And right. and and we're seeing that. Uh, but I do like that that point because there is somebody to take your place. And and in baseball, dude, the I looked at the list this week. It was like five guys had Tommy John surgery. That's just part of it. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. always superstars going down. Um, Otani not pitching this year, same problem. So it's well, happening in all sports. It's not like got some gambling. It's not like we're. It's not like we're uh, like this crazy sport with injuries. Like all sports have that that aspect. Okay. Yeah. What I worry about is we don't have physical trainers. We don't have. Yeah. I mean, we lost Seth. That was cool. Now, yeah. now I go over to the booth and I'm, I'm moving these bands. I'm open to remember I'm doing like a jump rope with something. That's not a jump rope. I'm like, I'm just massaging myself. You know, I don't know what's going on over there. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, but I mean, that's, that's nice. Is that, is that something that they, that maybe they could think about doing like a little recovery with like a little ice bath sauna stuff afterwards, maybe massage, hey, you know, afterwards, get, massage, get all the work nice, Get a couple of Asian ladies or, out there walking on our backs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also, I also worry about like how much it costs to do all that stuff to really take care of your body right. is an expensive endeavor. It really is. If you want to have good, like, good food. If you want to have the massages, if you want to have um, the gym and and physical trainers, yeah. your health guidance, all that stuff, you can do it yourself. But really, you want to save your time and you want to be practicing, so it's an expensive kind of feat to to have. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, obviously these all sports are a lot more advanced than we are, and those millions of dollars being thrown around, so it's a little bit easier for them to have physical trainers and people, you know, kind of like watching every little thing and making sure people are staying healthy and, and not, you know, prone, prone to injury, um, which we don't have in this golf. And that I might just be part of the growing pains. You know, we don't all have the, the big enough contracts to, to have a whole team to help us out um, with that. So I think it's something that would probably get better as far as the immediate answer. I don't know. Also, I just, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how much everyone practices. Cause I, I, I also don't think, People should be getting injured if we're just going out and playing around today. It's like the, I, I don't think we throw enough shots to to put our body in, in, in risk like that, which obviously I guess is wrong because people are all getting injured. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just go to the gym. Like I said, I don't know. I, you know, 
Get those, get, get those muscles, muscles around to protect the joints. Yeah, get those it's muscles. It's like a little strong. shield around every little joint. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. You get that uh, that low T too. I was having those low T problems. Now now I'm good to go. Um, oh. Uh, before we let you go here, Ezra, we normally let you know you know let people like shout out like stuff that's coming, sponsors, whatever. Uh, are you gonna announce? I know you kind of told me this off podcast. But like, are you gonna announce your sports card channel on Tour Life tonight? Wow, you're just gonna you're just gonna blow it like that, like I don't even give me a chance. Yeah, so um, it's gonna be called Easy. It's gonna be called Easy Rips because we're gonna be ripping packs all day long. I'm gonna be going live at 2 p.m. Central every single day for five hours straight, and we're gonna be ripping packs. So hopefully we can have you on, Brody. It should be a lot of fun. I don't the call. I don't get the call thing. I'm sorry. Uh... We really love easier, them. Uh, we love uh, them. The easier is like a great is a great name. Easier up, baby. Let's see if I have any of your cards, actually, right now. Um, but go ahead, go ahead and uh, shout out stuff that actually is actually happening right now. Oh, um, I don't know if a whole lot's happening. I mean, I'm I'm kind of trying to grind and keep my keep my routine the same, and hopefully get that. Oh, like sponsors and stuff, this. Ezra. Yeah, we're, I, don't, we're, I, don't we're just, I don't think I have anything crazy like going on with that either. Um, your tour oh, series yeah, disc, to... Ezra. Tour series disc. Follow me on YouTube. Check me out on my does, Instagram page. Does this does this guy have a gun to your head right now? <laughs> oh, hey, look at this. There we go. Sick, dude. Yeah. See, you got some I sick cards. Like you got some That's sick. Awesome. I think it'd sell for more than twenty. Um, you got um, some. Thanks, thanks. Fix. Thanks to thanks to my sponsor, Fishcraft Squad OTB. Um, I mean, obviously, without without having sponsors, this it's not really possible to even have this dream job. So thank you to them, and then also thanks to everyone who's cheering me on and rooting for me these last couple of events. Um, yeah, it means a lot to see people out there, and it's always it brings the excitement and to see the positive comments and the YouTube videos and the Instagram comments. Um, yeah, it means a lot. It keeps me pushed, keeps me going. So thanks to everyone for that. Fan, thanks to you guys for having me on. Yeah, fan favorite Ezra right here. Oh wow! Thanks, man. Ezra Robinson's in here too. <laughs> one one of the best players on tour. Dot dot dot. That hasn't won yet. That's all right. You know, That's losing the point of winning, so I'm, I'm trending in the right direction. Will that change this? Hey, maybe you're saving it up for one of the big ones. I have played well in majors in the past, so yeah. A, a B I'm did. This week. We got we got music city this weekend. A B did. A B did say though that he wants to win European Open more than anything. And that is a major that you've done well at in the past. I did, I did, uh, see, I did actually, I was tuned in, I actually saw him say that. And uh, it'd be awesome to have a battle with Anthony at European Open this next year. Is he your rival? Um, <laughs> I don't think I have any rivals yet at this point. I'm trying, I mean, he, he, he picked, yeah, I saw, I saw him pick Gannon for his rival. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. So once once I start getting some more wins, once I start getting some wins, then then I think that can be more of a conversation. Right, but right. It's fun battling him now, man. He's he is he's tough to beat, you know. But he's one of my buddies, so it's like I I'm happy to see him succeed. But at the same time, it's like kind of want to punch him in the face. Yeah, you kind of want to punch him in the face. Yeah, such a punchable face. You know, it's like it's crazy. Punch right in the face. <laughs> I was I was waiting I was waiting to to see you know the lead card coming in at the end of this last tournament. So he tapped out his podcast side weights whatever, and then he's like walking over. And then when he sees me, he has like this little smoke on his face. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like I'm like, I'm like oh my gosh, I want to beat this guy. But then I'm able to get a little like taking guys and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Say, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. Did he say anything like, "Hey man, nice shot on uh, nice shot on hole 15 or whatever"? <laughs> nice shot on hole 14. I, I, don't, I doubt he was watching. I doubt he was watching. He did say that. Gannon might be. Gannon's watching coverage as he's playing. We all yeah, know that. that um, he, he doesn't miss That's anything. True. All right. Well, we'll let you go. Thanks so much for jumping on. I know you were supposed to come on earlier, so we appreciate you being flexible and coming on at the end. Uh, I think people really enjoyed that. And uh, good luck this yeah, week. So. Little Nashville. Thank you, yeah, thanks, for, you know, thanks, for, thanks for being uh, patient with the, with the, the timing of that. No, you're all good. Uh, we'll see. I'll see you in a couple, mm, six days, seven days, something like that. Heck yeah. Hey, Brody, baby. Hey, collect sports cards, man. Back. Collect sports cards. They're cool. They're cool. My signal. Easy rips. My signal's going out. My signal's going out right now. I can't. Easy rips is in the house. <laughs> All right, rips. take it easy, man. Have a good night.